You know what? Excellence is what you want. And excellence is what you get. How are you living? What are you giving? If excellence is what you see, then excellent is who you be. What are you pursuing? It's all up to you when. When you come and make up. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, beloved. Dr. Catherine E. James here bringing you For the Love of It, a weekly show designed with the sole purpose of adding more love into the world, one episode at a time. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your precious time with me. I am grateful to have you join us now live. Call in. Let's have a conversation. Y'all know I love to have real time live conversation. Or if you're going to watch the show later, be sure to go to WHPR TV channel 33 and you'll be able to get a replay of the episode or check my timeline. It'll be posted there as well. So I absolutely love engagement. You see the numbers below. Call in on any one of those numbers at any point during the show. Earlier, the better. All right, all right. For the love of it, we'll take on many forms. We just don't ever know what Papa has in store for us, but it's always really good, isn't it? Um, everything, though, will be anchored in Luke 10, 27. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. It's that part, the as thyself, that I've been birthed to add into the world, to champion, to advocate for, that we love ourselves. Self-love is the order of the day for, for the things that, that matter most to me. And so you'll see that if you ever need some more tools around self-love, you can get our seminal work, Self-Love, a gift you give yourself on any of the major platforms. So I find that there's a Matthew scripture that talks about it, but certainly Luke 10, 27. That last part, that anchoring part, is why I've been birthed. And that's to love myself well so that I live from runneth over place, right? 23rd Psalms and our cup runneth over. So, beloved, here's an early tip, a self-love tip. And that's one of the things we're going to try to do every, we're going to do every episode. Um, a self-love tip right out the gate is love yourself so well, so well, that your cup remains full more often than not. So that you're never serving from your cup, beloved. Oftentimes we think we serve from our cup. Actually, many of us, particularly women, especially particularly women in the church, have been taught to serve, 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 until they're until we're serving from the drags of the cup, the the crusty, the the dry crusty place. Now, have you ever seen a Snickers commercial where where, where someone is hungry? Oftentimes, beloved, we're serving from a place where we're dry, and so. The 23rd Psalms for me, where it says, and our cup runneth over, we are to live in those places. P Papa God um, um, promises us a runneth over cup, but we have to do our part. So you got to add into you. I add into myself all kinds of ways, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But one self-love tip is to continue to serve yourself well so that you, you have an overflow. Because look, beloved, what would it be like if we live the kind of life where we serve ourselves well, and we've got this overflow always available to service others. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. The cup is yours. We all got a cup. And we all are responsible for filling our own cup. Look, ain't nobody, nobody is responsible for your happiness. I need you to hear that because we're walking around. Now, I'm not talking about it for children. I'm not talking about that. But when we are full-grown adults, we're full-grown adults, and we're waiting on someone else to make us happy. Now, this is a sidebar. There's like nowhere on my notes. But we're waiting on someone else to make us. No one is responsible for your happiness. And as a matter of fact, if you're waiting for folk to make you happy, they can't do enough to make you happy because that means that happiness is eluding you from the inside. That was for free. I'm just saying. That, that came straight from the throne room. Somebody needed to hear that. All right, beloved. And so... It is imperative then that we live, right, from this place, this overflow place, and then service becomes a, you know, it's, it's not even questionable as whether or not we're going to serve. Of course we will. So that's that. That's why we do this. That's why the show is called For the Love of It, 
So for my part, that it is my life's intent that every soul, that's you and I, with no love, with a capital L, and know the experience of love, and know that they are loved. So every soul with no love and know that they are loved. I, all my breathing and living and moving is toward that end. Do I do it perfectly? Nope. <laughs> no, I do not. Nada. Because I'm not a perfect being and neither are you, beloved. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. So, to that end, every conversation we facilitate, all the tools and strategies we share, the guests we have on the show, and the actions we invite you to take will all be intended to lead you and I to live out the assumption of Luke 10, 27. That's the whole point of this. That's the whole point. So, this morning on my live, and by the way, I do a live every Monday through Friday, except on holidays, every Monday through Friday from 5.40 to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. So, Dr. Catherine E. James, you search me on any of the media platforms or Dr. Catherine E. J. For Instagram, you'll be able to locate me. So this morning on my live, <laughs> oh boy, did I have to drag out of bed. I know I'm looking good right now. <laughs> but this morning, oh Lord. So, and that's why I forgot Tim's pie too. I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> that's an inside joke. <laughs> so this morning on my live, I wrote, well-used body mind, time, and finances. Well used body, mind, time, and finances. Boy, <laughs> when I got home last night, I don't even know what time it was. But when I tell you I used all of those things for weeks in preparation of, 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 of helping my son and daughter in love to host Thanksgiving. I've had the privilege of hosting it um, probably to see my son is 35. So probably for the last 27 years and they purchased their home. And so now their home is larger. And so they host now, but you know, mama still does a lot of the, the heavy hitting. And so I've done that in preparation and man, well-used body, well-used mind, well-used time and well-used finances. First of all, thank you. Thank you, Papa for all those possibilities. Thank you. I, your daughter, am so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All week long on my lives, I've been talking about thankfulness and gratitude and appreciation. And so I'm gonna tell you a story, but it is all couched in this notion of gratitude and thankfulness. I am so full and rich. Even though I had to drag myself out of my car last night, drag myself, to get some bags. The only reason I took them in the car because they had food that needed to be dealt with. And um, and then up the, up the stairs, exhausted. Well used though, well earned. And so, so we, so how do I don't wanna, I don't even know where to start with the story. I come from a rich um, extended family experience. I love it for me. The way that I am, like we could all live in the same house. <laughs> we could we could all have this big giant house where everyone lives together and um, shared experiences, shared finances, shared responsibilities. I think it's a win-win. I think that that was one of the greatest gifts of the African-American experience. We didn't have a lot of the things that we have we traded that extended family experience for the American dream, and the American dream wasn't designed for us, and the American dream kills us because we're trying to carry the weight by ourselves that we were never intended to. We were always intended to live in community. We were always intended to live in the family, the, the, the extended family experience, and now this nuclear thing, ha, it wasn't designed for communal beings. I'm just saying. That's a whole nother show. So for me, I was blessed in a, in a family experience to grow up that way. Cousins and, and, and aunts and, and a couple of uncles. <laughs> it was mainly matriarchal though, but, but cousins and, and all of those kinds of things. And it was a, a rich lived experience. At one point, my family literally, we were all in the same apartment building. There were six apartments and we were housed by all of the aunties. And, and it was just beautiful. So that, that's my heart. So. Do you know how we have the experience 
in families, often we have a big mama or a grandma or a granny and everything anchors on them. And then when they pass, the family scatters. Mm, it's a travesty. It's a travesty, and I say it happened time and time again. So my mom, my mom passed, and um, it probably happens in my mama generation when my grandma passed. But certainly when my mother passed, there was some scattering that happened. Um, and because my mother was the oldest of eight girls, and so we used to have Thanksgiving where there could be 75 people in the house. Christmas Eve where, oh my God, it's just only standing room only. Those are fond, fond, fond memories for me. And I do everything within my being to ensure that those kind of memories last, that they go on and on and on and on. So yesterday we had a small, a much smaller gathering than we, we do. And so let me just say this live for all of the Woods clans and all of those who are part of the Woods clans, the Jameses host Thanksgiving every year no matter what. I'm just saying. And for the extended fam family experience, because, you know, for me, blood, is, blood does not limit what family is. Blood doesn't define family for me. So all of you who are family, you know who you are. So I'm just saying that. And so we had the beautiful experience yesterday of family, we stood in a circle and we did a prayer and holding the hands and I ask everyone to share what they're grateful for. And from the youngest to the oldest, everybody, you know, just about everybody shared something that was beautiful. And what was the theme is we're grateful for family. We're grateful for this circle. We're grateful for being here. We're grateful for, right? Beloved, that's what life is about. So even if your family is not blood if it's not whatever who cares you make your family is it healthy check is there love check is there accountability check is there growth check i'm just saying create it because we were we were intended to live in healthy safe vibrant community so lots of hours of work up and down the stairs organizing designing, and I'm not a natural cook. I'm just saying. That pie that I was bringing to him, I didn't make it. I, I, it's, it's my daughter in love. She from Arkansas, and she can cook anything. I'm a natural at a lot of things. Cooking is not it. Now, what I can cook, I can cook. Now, I do dressing and Cornish hens, and I do those well, extremely well. <laughs> and yams, they off and on, <laughs> right? <laughs> But give me a curriculum to decide, to design, I'm your girl. Give me a live talk show, I'm your girl. Give me something to help somebody to love themselves, I'm your girl. Tell me to cook something from scratch, I'm not her. And if I have to do my daughter-in-law's uh, macaroni, she gonna give me the recipe step by step. I mean, my daughter-in-law, I don't call her law in law by daughter in law and it's gonna work me now i'll get it because i can follow instructions but i'm gonna feel like i worked i come off from a show like this designing a conversation designing a whole women's advanced self-love queens adventure abroad in another country and do not feel like i've worked put me in the kitchen and i'm like Whoo, work okay anyway sidebar so so um all of that work yesterday, designing and organizing and tables and chairs and, and, um, and decorating, like I, it's natural for me to do things like that. And that work gives me life. So well used, yes, yes, well used body, well used mind, well used time and well used finances, yes. I will do it again and again and again and again to have the experience of family and friends together under one roof, loving on each other. For me, that is worth it. It is worth it. It is worth my time, yes. It's worth my energy, yes. It's worth me being exhausted. Look, I woke up this morning and could barely move. I'm just saying. And I, you know, I'm a person who walked two miles a day, five miles on the weekend. I work out and all those kinds of things. But the workout I've done in the last few weeks to get prepared for this, it was well worth it. All of the steps that I took to make sure things were in order, it was well worth it. 
me having to remake. Now you you don't even know. You you when I say this, you're not gonna get the gravity of it. I made the largest pan of dress and stuffing mix that I'd ever made. Like because some people love it, they wanted a, a vegan vegan version of it. That's not easy for me, but I, I went on and took it. But then as I go to taste it, get ready to put it in a pan, why is it salty? Like stuffing should dressing should not be salty. I look at my daughter's poultry season and the first ingredient is celery salt. Y'all, I was liberal with that poultry season. <laughs> that worked me. But I ended up making another thing of cornbread, whatever, whatever. No harm, no foul. It worked. It was worth it. The extra run to the store, it was worth it. The extra, you know, sleeping, staying the night over their house to make sure that everything gets done. It was worth it. What am I saying? All of that yesterday, all of that effort leading up to yesterday equals love. Equals love. So I'm inviting you to love you so well that you have an overflow, that you have an abundance, that you have the willingness to sacrifice time, money, body, and finances for togetherness today i set and stand in such a place of gratitude and gratefulness for all the babies and little ones that were running around yesterday it was so noisy <laughs> and i and you can tell i have a natural outside voice man was it noisy but it was beautiful noise beautiful like music to my ear pitter patter everywhere my Mama James, Auntie, can we have that's music to my ear? And then see my nephews and my my nieces and my sister cousin and and my um, my loves, right? My husband, my son, and and all of my other sons and daughters from from out of town. I mean, it's just worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. So I'm just saying. That's what life is about. If you, if you look at any of the research and any of the literature, when they ask the question, when people who are on their deathbed, right, or who know that they're transitioning, and when they ask the question of what is it about life that was important to them, the most important thing, or if they have any regrets, almost always they regret not the time they didn't spend in the office, not the time they didn't spend getting this big deal, not the time they didn't spend purchasing this new pair. No, they regret not um, navigating. That's not the word I want to use. They regret not um, enriching, mm, growing the relationships with their loved ones. That's what we regret. I won't. <laughs> that won't ever be a regret of mine because I love intentionally. I love deeply. And my love is demonstrated by showing up in life. Beloved, um, so scripture says, be you not deceived. God is not mocked. For so whatsoever a man um, soweth, that shall he also weep, reap. A man or woman, or woman, boy or girl. If you sow into love, what you think you're getting back? What you think you're getting back? You're going to get love back. So I'm inviting you to love so intentionally, love so thoroughly, like always, always, always be prepared for your answer to be love. Now, look, don't get it twisted. Love does not mean doormat. Nothing about that is represented in me. You don't get to walk over me and it be okay. I am a person of love, and that will be the way that I show up. But I will hold you accountable, beloved. You better believe it. I will hold you responsible. I'm a person who walks in integrity and transparency and honesty, and I expect the same from others. And guess what? When I can't, now I don't demand it. I expect it. And when I realize that you're not a person like that, I'm like, no harm, no foul. I'm going to remove my own self. Just, I'm going to remove my own self. So if you're out there and you want to call in, 
Call in. We've got only um, only about five minutes left for a call. And if you want to call in, let's have a conversation about whatever it is that you'd like to have a conversation about. Again, 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 that self-love tip comes from Psalms 23, where it says that my cup runneth over. Look, Papa God is always willing for there to be a spread made for us of all the things that are uniquely for you to be blessed. But are you available for it? Let me tell you a way to get it is to practice gratitude and gratefulness. So yesterday at the dinner, of course, I would love to have it like we used to have it. And sometimes it makes my heart a little sad. I choose sadness and it don't make it. Nothing don't make feelings. We choose about what we say. So meditating on the old as if the new is not present and available could have me feeling sad. But I refuse to stay there. I could say, but this was not here, this was not here, and it used to be in this, that. No, 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 no. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be available for who's here. I'm going to love on them. We're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy ourselves, and we are going to do it every year because that's what it's about getting together as often as we can as much as we can with those who we love right with those who we love and those who love us so yesterday was that for me loving and being loved and i am grateful so that tops my gratitude all week long i've been talking about appreciation and gratitude in honor of thanksgiving on my lives and today was the thankful thankful friday like just topping it off with being totally grateful for life so what are you grateful for what are you thankful for i want you to say it out loud with me as i take just these next few seconds to talk about what i am thankful for what are you thankful for i'm thankful for life i'm thankful for love I'm thankful with love is love, love as our experience as, far, as well as God. I'm thankful for health. I am thankful for being able to crawl up under tables and, you know, get stuff from up. And I am thankful for the lift. I'm thankful for the exhaustion that I've and the achy legs and body. When I got out the bed this morning, I was making those noises you make when your body's like, uh, uh, <laughs> like shuffling my feet. It was worth it. It was worth Now, I've gotten rejuvenated. I've rested, moved around a bit. It was worth it, beloved. The love was worth it. The togetherness was worth it. The smiles was worth it. The, the experience of, of um, I don't know, just being together, it was worth it. All right, all right, all right. So I want to um, remind you, live from the runneth over place. Papa God invites us to live there. Whatever it is that makes your soul sing, if it's healthy and life-giving, go for it. Live from that place so you have so much to add to other people. I love you. I do. I really do. And some people are like, how can you love somebody you don't know? People hate people they don't know all the time. So why can't I love people I don't know? I choose to love because selfishly I want it back. It's not all that benevolent. I'm just saying <laughs> So here's our self-love mantra as we begin to close. I am an irreplaceable, unrepeatable, remarkable miracle with my own special brand of brilliance. You are an irreplaceable, unrepeatable, remarkable miracle with your own special brand of brilliance. You're irreplaceable, impossible to be replaced. Unrepeatable, you cannot be done again. Remarkable, you are uncommon and extraordinary. And um, miracle. My favorite, you are a surprising and welcomed event. That's a pom-pom move. You and I, we are surprising and welcomed events. So, every show that I'm privileged to host, you're going to be invited to be in action. Be in action towards your life's goal, your brilliance, whatever it is that, that, that makes you sing. Be in action. Don't wait on someone else to offer it or to bring it to you. You be in action. And what, what is it? Her, don't wait for, I forgot, Howard Thurman. I don't have time to think about it or look for it. But don't ask what the world needs for you. But you, you know, you do what, do. I don't know. You do what, what you what is yours to do, and, and the world will be blessed from that. That's not quoted correctly. I'm just saying. <laughs> if, you're, if you're inspired today, 
And you just say with the inspiration, that's only 34% that you're going to do what it is that is yours to do your brilliance, to live out your brilliance. But if you put a plan to it, you increase that to 91%. And if you share that plan, you increase it to 99%. Like when I said I was going to do a television show, I shared the plan and here we are. Now, um, let's see. Oh, I want you. So adding more love into the world. Join the join the movement. More love, please. Join the movement. Go to the website, drcatherineejames.com. Click on more love, please, and you can join the movement. Also, be sure to get the book. We are number one bestseller. Freedom is our birthright. Thank you, Tim. Freedom is our birthright. And so make sure you get the book. And then um, reach out to me, self-love at drcatherineejames.com. Look, join me on all of my, any of the social medias. Join me on the social media, live, uh, Facebook Live, every Monday through Friday, no matter where I am. And it's a trip when I'm in the West Coast. <laughs> so I come on at 540 Eastern Standard Time in the West Coast. It's, it's 240, right? 540 to, to 6 a.m. Join me, join me, join me. Um, email me at selflove at Dr. Catherine E. James if you like to engage at all. You can go on my website, drkatherineejames.com, and request a link to my calendar, right? And um, and you can reach me on the socials. I'd love to engage and stay engaged with you. And, of course, of course, of course, of course, you can connect with us live here every Friday from 1130 until noon. Um, if I'm in town, then it will be live. Like today, I'm live. Oh, but if this is a replay, it won't be <laughs> <laughs> and then when I'm not out of town, we do replays. So again, beloved, what are you grateful for? I asked you that earlier in the show, and I gave you some time to pull it together. What are you grateful for? I am grateful for you. Because if you're watching this show, and you've made it to this part of the show, then you've made a commitment to better your best, to be the best version of you to find some tools to love yourself, right? Because otherwise, this might just sound airy-fairy, like what is she talking about, whatever, whatever. But that's okay. We all have what it is that we are to bring in life. And some people are to bring critical, <laughs> critic, critic, critics, um, you know, naysayer kind of things. That's okay. I don't know. Maybe they're not. No, I'll take that back. People are not designed to do that. People choose that. Anyway. <sighs> remember the conversations that we share on this show, um, the tools and strategies we offer are never intended to substitute for official mental health practice. If you are needing service, um, then I invite you to seek out a professional mental health practitioner. I am one of those. I am, uh, I hold a master's degree in pastoral counseling, so I'm a licensed professional counselor, and I have a PhD in educational psych, but not for this show. Dr. Martin Luther King said, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve, and you don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics and physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. You can be that servant, beloved. This has been Dr. Catherine E. James serving you for the love of it on Dr. Uh, WHBR-TV Detroit. I love you.